So those damn right-wing sovereigns, I don't even know if they believe in goddamn constitutions, if they believe in the U.S. Constitution. I know they don't believe in state constitutions. Those damn right-wing sovereigns don't even believe states can exist, but states can exist per the U.S. Constitution. So where the hell are they getting at? Where the hell are they making this shit up? They don't think that states exist? If they don't think states exist, then that means there's no governors, and there's no sheriffs, and there's no commissioners. None of these exist. Or they're not legitimate. They're not constitutionalist. They're something else. Are they fucking Jesuits, Bilderbergs? They're some, the Confederate fucking piles of shit. What the fuck are they doing? Because if they take the name of constitutionalist and then people say no, and then they are the opposite of it. To be an American, you got to be a constitutionalist. Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes, that son of a bitch. <laughs> he goes to Paris, France. Thomas Hobbes flees to Paris, France. He's a royalist motherfucker. He's a landlord. He takes taxes and money from the poor serfs. The poor serfs are working the soil. And he's just sitting there picking their pockets. Why? Because he had to goddamn fucking do the pick a peck of beans when he was a goddamn kid. They wouldn't do that shit no more. Thomas Hobbes worked for the Earl of Devonshire. And so Thomas Hobbes just wrote all these legal books, elements of law and human nature and this and that. But the English Civil War, the dates of the English Civil War, 1641 to 1652, it's 11 years. The English Civil War is going to last for 11 years. And those are the same exact years that Thomas Hobbes was in Paris, France. So for a decade, England was at war. And if that's not a fucking royalist, what, is, what isn't it? Oh, it's like, oh shit, my country's warring amongst each other. And then the king is going to get his army. And that ch tells you these elitists, these aristocrats, if you believed in England and you believed in all that, he would have been out there fighting himself. But they're royalists. They're the aristocrats. So he was like, oh, oh shit, we're at war? Well, I better go to Paris, France and wait for the war to be over. And then go back. And they actually got pushed back. So he's in fear in England. And then he's in fear in Paris. And then gets pushed back. Is this really? I mean, he writes English. But is this even an Englishman? This Englishman seems to have no loyalty to England whatsoever. ever. He's like, oh, you parliamentarians? You all want England? Okay. Well, you got guns? Oh, shit. Well, why didn't you say so? See you later. No, you can have it. You Go ahead, take England. You can have Oliver. Poor Oliver Twist. But if that doesn't remind you of the Battle of Nantwich, I don't know. I don't know what would. When I think about how... I would like to be a good father. I guess you should have the same standard. Don't go and try to be a great anything. Just be a good, you know, be excellent. Do very well. Do good, do very well. Maybe even aim for greatness. But goodness, we'll, we'll, all, we'll be good with good. We'll all be good with good. So maybe we need a balance. When I go to raise my kids, I think about how I was raised. I was raised like a sixth sense. I don't know if you've seen the sixth sense or a time to kill is how I want to raise my kids in a time to kill. They will know that I love them versus a sixth sense. So a time to kill was the daughter was, you know, getting raped by these two piece of shit fucking redneck fuckers. And on court day, he shows up with an AK. Samuel L. Jackson. And the reason why that gets to me is because the daughter had said that she cried for her daddy 
over and over to come save her, and he, ne he wasn't there. And so it just hit his heart. And so he would have to walk away just thinking that, you know, she screamed out, you know, Daddy, Daddy. And then she couldn't have kids anymore. So it wasn't just, you know, an assault, but it was an assault that permanently dis disabled or disfigured, disabled, messed her up. But we could have some balance. But I feel like it's the exact opposite. It's like, what? He's being out. Hey, can you... Can you keep it down out there? It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, you have a siesta. You doing siestas now? <laughs> Our son... Getting ravished... Always disturbing my silence. Can you keep it down out there? Free speech. Oh, uh, don't talk to me about no damn Constitution America stuff. Oh, you're the tyrant. And you don't give a damn. And then I could see myself making a joke of it. And then not even be allowed to make a joke of it. Oh my gosh, he made a joke about what else am I supposed to do, motherfuckers? Tupac said to smile, no matter what, people are going to try to grind you down anyways. Smile anyways. So I think that's right. Versus a sixth sense where the mother is just sitting there putting the poison inside the, the kid's soup. Well, if that ain't the Battle of Nantwich, I don't know what is the Battle of Nantwich. I hate the Royalists, but King James I, Mary, I like Mary, Queen of Scots, and I like uh, Princess Diana. I like Mary, Queen of Scots, and I like Princess Diana. King James I, <clears throat> King James I, he, um, King James Bible, right, the Protestant, put uh, the Bible, the Latin Aramaic, Hebrew Bible, and in the English, so now it could be read, which I'm sure did change the philosophy. If you got illiterate, I bet you. I mean, why does English common law have any kind of? They don't even have a constitution or a bill of rights. How does English common law have any kind of staying power whatsoever, unless it's just a a sense of fairness and illiterate? Only a literate population would understand English common law. And who cares what Henry the fucking eighth thought? The sixth sense. The sixth sense. He could see dead people. And so he can put to uh, sleep. The dead people are still around because there's unfinished business. And so there is this one lady or something. There is a video camera. Oh, the kid was killed. And it was at the funeral. And I guess he pulls out the video camera out of nowhere and just starts playing it. And it was a video camera the kid had set up because it showed that the mother was putting poison into his soup. And then giving the soup to the, to the son. Killing him. Essentially killing him or keeping him sick so she could have the attention or she slowly killing him or something. I don't know. So... We could have a balance between those two, right? You want to go balls to the wall. You you would like to think that you would always be Superman or Batman or that you'd be the uh, the hero of any and every situation. But you might not be. And you may have done something but not enough. So you, you may have been decent but not great but good. And... We need good. Good, according to St. Augustine, <clears throat> people like to be bad. They like to do bad things. I got a list here. Why, would, why do people like to be bad? To steal other people's work. I mean, there's one reason. What? 
You went and got that money. You went and got that work. You went ahead and got all that that's yeah, yourself. All that wood yourself. Give me. Can I have all that work? Can I just take all that work from you? Can I just take all that wood? Can I just take all that money? Can I just take all the thing that you just you just earned? Yeah. Can I just can I just take all of that? I I didn't earn it. I didn't work for it. I just want to take. I just want to take it from you. That's one reason for evil. <laughs> Why would people be evil? Why would people be good? St. Augustine says to be good, the way you build up dignity and grace to enter into the pearly gates of heaven is you got to have a goodness framework. What is good? Planting trees is good. And then do the good. And you got to push yourself to do it. Plant the trees, plant the trees, plant the goddamn trees. <laughs> You're trying to do some good here. Johnny Appleseed was a good. Johnny Appleseed was a force for good. But I would say probably out of all of them, because I think hedonism, imperialism, oppression, I think nihilism, I think sadism. I think nihilism and sadism goes hand in hand. Because the saddest evil fucks are going around doing the evil shit. And even if you thought you was good, but you watch evil happen, well, you're a nihilist. You're not a fuck. You're not good. You're evil because you're allowing evil to reign supreme. Do as it pleases. To steal your wife and kids, land, resources, lust. Maybe because people like you and that's how they flirt. Wicked. Jealousy, lazy, to control, exploit, overweight, dead on the inside. They got no soul. They got no passion. Jealousy, they're, they're what? They're, um, they need each other, like clinically, like medically need each other. So, uh, codependency, they're two insecure fucks who are codependent. Oh my God. We can't go nowhere else. And since they're insecure, anytime the other one gets any attention from anybody, they're like, what? He don't love me no more. <laughs> and in a way, they're both kind of can't persuade, can't communicate. You don't know how to be a good friend, then, you know, it's probably just easier to be awful. I wonder if maybe people don't even think about it. Just hurt people, because, uh, I like hitting you. Why? Because it made me feel good. <laughs> yeah. You think if I hit you back, that'd make me feel good? Maybe. And then I could hit you, and then you could hit me, and then we'll be laughing. Are you in love with me? This, this feels like you don't really hate me. It feels like you... Hate and love are the exact opposites. It's the same... Two heads are the same. Not really. Some people love to hate and hate to love. Some people love to hate and to hate to love. So I'm excited about that Battle of Nantwich. The Battle of Nantwich is a victory for the parliamentarians. Against the Royalist. Thomas Fairfax is on the right side. Thomas Fairfax is on the revolutionary side. You're going to have a revolutionary government in goddamn early, early England. Way before everybody. All the Puritans, all the pil pilgrims that come to America. They knew about the English Civil War. They knew about Charles. They knew what was, what was the deal. Puritans, that's fucking goddamn... Cromwell was a Puritan. Cromwell was a Puritan. So that means these sons of bitches come to America, not just for religious freedom, but just to get away from the king. Fuck the king. They had a fuck the king sentiment when they came here. And the Puritans banned Christmas. And incredible that Oliver Cromwell, the Puritans are the ones that conquered the royalist. So it was the ones that said, we are so pure. We are the ones that read the Bible and we are better. And more pure Christians than all the rest. The purest of the pure Christians are the ones that are going to 
kill the shit out of all the Charles of Fife, his kingdom and all his. Thomas Fairfax with his ragtag army. Apparently he cried when he saw his, he's like, oh, battle of Nantwich. Nantwich, there's like 2,000 people there. And I heard Lord Byron had like 4,000 people. And then it went down, they had 500 casualties. So they had a skirmish. It should be the second battle of Nantwich. The first one, January 18th. They attacked Nantwich and they suffered 500 casualties and so they retreated. So now Nantwich, everybody's getting reinforcements if there's to be reinforcements to be gotten. Th Thomas Fairfax is eventually going to Benedict Arnold the Civil War by being part of the restoration of the fucking monarchy. Charles the fucking second. But at this time right now, 1644, Thomas Fairfax is a badass. 1637 is when the pilgrims are killing Native Americans and at the Mystic River, 700 people. So this is seven years after that. Thomas Fairfax with his ragtag army is going to defeat Lord Byron's army. And I think they're all going to fucking just give up. They're going to have like 2,000 prisoners. I mean, that's the best kind of fucking battle right there. It would, ha it would, it would suck, right? You, you go into battle prepared basically to... Have to stab them all, right, with your sword. Just stab everybody with the sword. Isn't that how you win in the battle? Isn't that how the Ukrainians or the Russians to win the battle? You got to do them all in. But the Battle of Nantwich, I'm not for sure how many casualties there was at the second one. I want to say January 24th, 25th. A lot of people say 25th, but I'm pretty sure it's the 24th. The Battle of Nantwich. I think they just kind of fucking caught them while they're on the porta potty. They they had their pants down below their ankles and they're taking a shit just like in Unforgiven. Just sitting there taking a shit. So it's like, oh. I surrender. Will you just take me a prisoner? And then that has to suck taking prisoners back in those times when everything, everybody was poor and shit. Nobody had anything. Hobbes says everybody has a right to, you know, food and water. But he also says everybody has a right to fire. So not just good, not just a, a, a sustenance life, but a good life. Not just a barely existing kind of life. Not just eking out. But a good life. So that damn Thomas Hobbes. He goes to Paris, France the entire 10 years of the Civil War. So he didn't participate in the English. And then he's going to write Behemoth. What the fuck do you know about the Civil War, Thomas Hobbes? You weren't even a part of the goddamn thing, motherfucker. He was pushed out of England. Okay, you take England. And then pushed out of Paris, France, because they were like, oh, you got weird ideas. Okay, fine. Goes back to England. All right, fine. Let's see if we can get this. And then he gives the book to Charles II, and Charles II doesn't like the Leviathan. The Leviathan is all about how having a strong, sovereign government is good. And uh, the only thing I could think that Charles II didn't like would be the fucking human nature, the human rights, <laughs> the, the rights of man. What? Men don't have rights. Get that rubbish out of here. And then Thomas Hobbes gets locked up in the tower. Or, you know, he gets banished out of the court. He even wrapped the book, The Leviathan, in vellum. I don't even know what vellum is. It sounds like it's it's like fancy fabric. Like uh, silk or something, you know? Or like, what's that golf course? Putt-putt. What's that material in putt-putt? That fake green... So, balance? Can we get some balance, folks? Huh? Can we get some balance? And uh, if the people want to say, well, the Constitution says uh, there's no state of Colorado and there's no state of Nevada and there's no state of Texas, you're not an American, you piece of shit. What are you talking about? The Constitution does say we can form state governments. So, you're kind of making up shit. The right-wing sovereign fucking... How is that a movement? How, how are people like, well, that makes sense to me. What makes sense to you? Being a fucking criminal fuck? 
being a dumbass criminal fuck who doesn't know left from your right, don't know the law from your fucking morals. Ethics and morals and law. <laughs> oh, I care about the laws most. I care about the poor. Do you care about the poor? <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I care a lot about the poor and the homeless. What, how, in what ways? Well, I gave the, that motherfucking Curtis. He told me, trying to prove to me he was good, man. I saw a homeless man. And I, I gave him a sandwich. <laughs> you gave him a sandwich. <laughs> no, you didn't. Why did you have a sandwich? Like in your pocket? You just had a sandwich in your pocket? There's a homeless man. There you go. Boom. If he did, that'd be nice. But the way he said it was like, yeah. clearly a lie. Hex tool. 